English Across the Pond. Hello, English Across the Pond. Wow. Wow. We should put like fanfare in the back. I like that sort uh, of welcome. fanfare thing. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was an open stadium and we're like running out on a stage. Oh, yeah. This is another episode of English Across the Pond. This is the place to be, to practice, to learn, to build confidence and fluency with English, especially if you are learning English right now. Why? Because English Across the Pond gives you real conversation, natural English expressions, and two native speaking English teachers. More than that, you get to learn American English with me and British English with my partner. So naturally, you are going to hear vocabulary differences, accent differences, cultural differences. So there is so much to learn every single week on this podcast. We are so happy to have you here. Hi. Hello. And I want to quickly introduce ourselves before we get into the topic of this week. My name is Jennifer. I am your American English teacher recording from California. Hello. How are you? Hello. My name's Dan. I am a British English teacher. Would you like a cup of tea? And a bit of lolly. <laughs> Which... Yeah, and of course a bit of lolly, yes. <laughs> yeah, you also get to hear me doing the British accent, accent and Dan occasionally doing the American accent, so we have a lot of fun on this podcast as well. This week we are talking about advertising. Every single week we have a new topic that will give you the confidence, the language, the inspiration to have your own conversations in English. So advertising. Mm. <clears throat> Hot topic. Mm. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Advertising has been around for ages. What do you, th- do you think advertising has changed over the years? Uh, yeah, because... Um, I think maybe since the, I don't know when actually, 80s and maybe 90s, it's become more clinical and it's become more targeted and psychologists, psychiatrists, whatever, what have you, have become involved. Whereas I think back in the old days, it was just, buy my apples, apples, Mm. 10 apples, one dollar. Whereas I think nowadays it's kind of 10 reasons why you need an apple. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's become, in a way, better. But in a way, kind of more kind of mm, CD in a way, I suppose. NLP, you know, Neuro Linguistic Programming and the tricks that they use. For example, one simple example blowing the smell of hot bread into the beginning of the supermarket. You know, when you enter. Clever. Do they do that? Yeah. Damn right they do. (laughs) Hell yes. And, hold on, also putting all the fresh produce at the beginning of the supermarket so as you go round, you feel to yourself, well, I've bought the fresh, good, healthy produce. Time for some cake. Whereas, if they put the cake at the front of the shop, you wouldn't buy it. Oh, yeah. You probably wouldn't. So, advertising, in my mind, I was kind of thinking about commercials, Mm. different types of advertisements on the radio Mm -hmm. or on websites or things like that. But you're kind of taking it to a whole new level. Yeah, sorry about that. No, I love it. Mm. It just prompts me to ask, what are different ways... Well, what is advertising? What's the point of advertising? Yeah. (laughs) 
trying to convince people that the rubbish th <laughs> trying to convince people that the thing that you have that they don't need <laughs> that they want no sometimes they need it <laughs> true true but then you know the things that we really 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 need generally aren't advertised so much it's you know but um yeah it's advertising is the promotion of products to entice people to part with their money and um, take one of what you make home with them. Mm, or a service you provide, yeah. or something else you sell, or maybe uh, a place, an, an experience you create. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's different types of advertising. Yeah. Print advertising, which would be print what would be in print in newspapers or magazines yeah you know like the the perfume ad do you remember i don't get magazines anymore i don't know if you do or used to but remember with the new like in a magazine for the scent oh yeah you would open up the little flap oh yeah and you could like smell the scent right in the magazine you're basically rubbing a magazine on your neck <laughs> yes Oh yeah, that was, a, that was fun. a perfume or a cologne advertisement. I I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Print. Uh, can we say print is also like website banners and pop ups and things like that, even though it's not technically printed? Mm, well, there are there are words there, but other print is billboards, isn't it? You know the massive things as you drive. Oh, yes. As you drive through the city, that's print as well, isn't it? But they're electronic do you now call as them well. Billboards. Billboards. Yeah. What do you call them? Billboards, but I think I was thinking of like the Portuguese word. I think in Portuguese they call them like outdoors. Oh wow, good name. Or something like that. Yeah, my my Brazilians and Portugal and Angola and Portuguese speaking countries. Let me know. Mm. I think it's outdoors. Billboards can be expensive. I wouldn't know. Especially if you're in prime real estate right off the freeway. Yeah, just off the okay, street. Okay, so there's print. Yeah. yeah. There are print. There is what would like radio and podcast. Digital. And digital? Mm hmm. I oh, think. Digital, okay. Yeah. So that could be like you. most podcasts have them. Yeah. Most, a lot of website banners have them. Mm -hmm. So that kind of leads me to ask about distractions. Can advertising on these things be distracting or what? What do you D think? Distract me from what? From my job, you mean? From my work? Like distracting. Like when you go onto a website, do you notice when there are a lot of advertisements on there and like website banners and pop-ups? Or is it yeah. something that you don't even notice? Well, I have got a... What's it called? EAB. I have got a pop-up blocker. And there's also... Um, hold on. Is it Mercury Mercury Reader? Do you know Mercury Reader? I don't know that. Well, it's a Google plugin. And um, sites that have a lot of advertisements, um, websites that have a lot of advertisements, and you know somewhere in there buried is a news article, you know like maybe with the LA Times or something, and you're scrolling down and the advert's following you, do you know what I mean? Like, go away, yeah. leave me alone. Well, if you click on Mercury Reader, one press and um, all the ads go, and you're left with just the article. <whistles> Sweet mother of God. Yeah. Mercury what? Reader. Reader. Yeah. Writing it's a rocket. Down. It's a it's a the logo is a little rocket. And you add the extension to your Chrome browser if you use I think it's on Firefox as well. And when you pull up a website that's full of ads, you just click on Mercury Reader and it just becomes just the article and then you realise actually this is just hundred and twenty words of just plain text. And you can change it if you want it to go into dark mode or if you want to change the font to be um more dyslexic friendly and things. Yeah, it's got a few sort of um, options oh. on there yeah it's good interesting i feel like food blogs and like recipe blogs always have a hundred trillion ads yeah yeah and then you have to like scroll down and then there's a pop-up and then you're clicking out of the pop-up and you're like 
oh my God, all I want to do is get this recipe. And you scroll down and then you're scrolling down for 10 minutes and then you're like, oh, there it is. Oh, it says click here to go to this other website to get it. Oh, okay. Wow. You know? Yeah. yeah a lot so that's of... what I mean by distracting. And also a lot of food um, blogs, they talk about how they have the inspiration for the recipe, how they share it with their partner. Then they talk about, and it, you, you know, the recipe is actually 10 minutes down the page. You know, that's another, that's not advertising. That's just food bloggers wanting you to read their stuff and spend more time on their site. So they bury it down the bottom somewhere and you think, where's the recipe? Where is the recipe? And you keep going down, going down, going down, going. You think, it's, there isn't a, re oh, here it is. Yeah. A food blogger 101. Naughty. Yeah. So other types of advertisements are what you were mentioning in the beginning of this episode. Oh, yeah. Like product placement. Oh, yeah. Or um, I don't know what that would be, what you mentioned about the like... Um, uh, the air blowing through the uh, the store. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what that is either. But that is a type of advertisement. Yeah. Do you know um, that product placement is going to be placed into classic movies? They're going to remake just with um, digital technology they're going to put like coca-cola in the background to like the wizard of oz no they are not yes they are why would they even consider doing something like that why would they ruin something so classic like that i don't know jenna i don't know my friend yeah it's happening i don't know that i would i i don't really watch a bunch of old classic movies no me neither but i don't if i was watching like Gone with the Wind. I don't think I'd want to see a Coca-Cola or an iMac in the background or an, her pulling up an Android phone. You know, like I wouldn't want to see any of that stuff. Well, I don't think they should do it. But in their defense, they do try to do it so that it is um, so that it fits in. It's not sort of, oh, it's the Tin Man. Hello, Scarecrow. Here's some Pepsi. It's kind of subliminally yeah. hidden away in the back somewhere, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I get that. Mm. I get that. Um, I think that the U.S. has a very particular niche of advertisements. Oh, yeah. That is kind of unique to the U.S. It doesn't really happen in other places. Can I... Do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe. I may be completely wrong. The guy on the forecourt going, Hey there, people. Come and buy my cars. Come down to Sam's Motors. No? Oh, gosh. Yeah, those are funny. <laughs> Do those not exist in the UK? No. No. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, those are classic. Do you still have them? Car... Yes. And car dealerships always have a jingle. That's a good Ooh, thing about advertising. Yeah. There's always a jingle. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the show Full House? <laughs> no. No. What? With Michelle Tanner, the famous Olsen twins? No. Jesse Katsopoulos and Danny Tanner? <laughs> oh, my God. I know the McDonald's whistle. What is it? <laughs> oh, yeah, that is it. So then that's like they get triggers are like those those jingles, those things like trigger something within us to make us remember something. Yeah. Um, but anyways, Full House, two of the characters, they were like jingle writers. It's like what they did. So it made me think of it. Oh. Back to the car thing. Yeah. Every like dealership has a song like, Mossy Nissan, Mossy Nissan's with you. Ah! you love know? it. Yeah. I love them. They're, they're really good. Uh, but that's not what I was talking no. about. Pharmaceutical drugs. Oh, yeah. We don't have them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. I think it was after the Super Bowl this last year. Um, Twitter blew up with tweets all about how shocked people outside of the U.S. were mm. watching so many pharmaceutical ads. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever seen one? Yeah, I've seen the kind of thing where it's the old people limping around and, ooh, ah, my hip. And then, oh, oh, look at me jet ski. <laughs> that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of it? Yeah. 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 So it's like, 
you know, somebody in the beginning of the ad. Yeah. They have their resting their their forehead and their fingers oh. with a oh. oh. Do you suffer from migraines? Oh. Migraines affect 18 million women and 5 million men per year, oh. but you don't have to no. if you get yeah. Fla- migraine esophilus. Flanerol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then it like goes into what it is, and then it just magically shifts to this woman running on the beach, and then doing all of these like <laughs> outdoor things, and then there's all this fine print that's so small, oh, yeah, you yeah, would yeah. never, ever, ever, ever really be able to read it, and then it's like this medicine may cause death, heart palpitation, yeah, stroke, yeah. or you might even end up losing a leg when you wake up, and all of your body parts, you know, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I think it's funny that one of the side effects is... I mean, I know that that the reason they put that a side effect may be death is then that really covers them if anybody... You know, it's very wise to do that. But it's on the other side of it, from our side of the fence. (laughs) Like, potential side effect, death. (laughs) What? You're like, sign (laughs) me up. Yep, I'll take one of those, please. I'll take two of those. Yeah. It's, yeah. Bizarre. Um... So, yeah, advertisements of that. What do you think? Is there any type of ads that exist in the UK that you don't think are international that would exist here? Mm, mm, No, I would guess, though, that uh, this isn't answering your question. I don't know. Not that I know of is the answer. But um, I would guess, of course, that we advertise very differently. I always think about, you know, how wrong we could go if, you know, if, we or if anybody else you know you advertise your italian product in brazil or your brazilian product in japan and you just think and all of the japanese people would think that doesn't appeal to me at all you've not pushed any of my buttons because you don't understand my culture you know how advertising must be culture specific Mm-hmm. so that makes me think of when you have to evaluate an ad like marketing perspective or something there's always got to be like an audience that's targeting yeah 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 like, who's the audience it's targeting? What's the point of the ad? You know what ads are crazy? Old cigarette ads. Oh, yeah, they're cool, aren't they? When, when Father Christmas is smoking. <laughs> Sand. Or like when a pregnant woman's smoking. And the doctor. And it's like Lady Fair cigarettes. Yeah. The doctor encourages you to smoke stavice because they're a smoother. <laughs> a smooth. Ah. Like, I don't know if it's like nostalgia. It's not really nostalgia because it wasn't my era. Mm. But old school like ads from the 1950s just seem so much cooler. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. You know, or like, maybe not cooler, but they just seem so much, I don't know, catchy, silly. I don't know. Now it's just like pictures of models. Yeah, I mean, you do occasionally get, like, really good ads. Um, I'll tell you what was clever here. We had this years and years ago now. There was a, you know, a price comparison site. Do you have those here in the US if you want to, like, take out insurance on your car or something? You go to a price comparison website. Uh, yeah, sure. And this company, instead, of, they're called comparethemarket.com. But they invented this huge thing called Compare the Meerkat. Do you know a meerkat? Those beautiful little like meerkats a a meerkat yeah and they made this like spoof kind of compare the meerkat.com and you could go on the website and compare different meerkats and rather than compare the market and this just went so viral it's still going like 10 years later you can buy meerkat toys and it was just a ridiculous idea but kind of like an earworm you know like just something that everybody was talking about because it was so ridiculous that you could go on the website and you couldn't compare the market you could only compare meerkats ah it just like took off like a little simple idea that took off yeah went viral went viral um this episode is sponsored by (laughs) compare the market and compare the meerkat.com yeah nice Sponsorship, that's another form of advertisements. True. Super Bowl, we're going to end with Super Bowl advertisements. Oh, yeah. One million dollars mm. per commercial. I thought it would be more. I I think it maybe it starts at a million dollars. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And maybe it's like a million dollars for, let's see, Super Bowl commercial cost. 
2021 price of a 30 second commercial 5.5 million dollars how long 30 seconds oh my gosh 30 seconds should we do it (laughs) oh my gosh that's crazy maybe we should take out a minute because that would just be a cool 10 million yeah so easy pocket change yeah so what is the point why what's the value why would someone pay five million dollars for that kind of advertisement well i think that the super bowl ads have become a thing in their own league haven't they they're you know they're something i mean i know i do actually watch the super bowl sometimes but even uk people who've never watched the super bowl we know about the heart the half time and about the you know which act's going to be on and the ads as well and how much they cost and blah blah so i think that mm, the super bowl is an exception but obviously the reason that people pay so much to advertise um at the super bowl half time is because it works yeah maybe maybe it does work a lot of people watching so i guess the audience the audience thing is big there and maybe there's something about as you're filling your face full of chicken you're more likely to buy something you know maybe there's something chicken wings yeah maybe there's something like you're watching the game you're feeling happy you're with the family maybe you think oh and then of course if they show you a car you'll associate that car with good happy family times then in six months later Mm. you think i'm gonna buy a toyota i don't know why but I just fancy a Toyota. And that seed was planted in the Super Bowl halftime. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Well. Yeah. Stay tuned and you will hear the next advertisement from English Across the Spond, a Pond and their sponsor. Bing, bong, just bing. kidding. We don't, have adver- we don't really have advertisements. We have had advertisements. We're not, I think, not open to advertisements. But to me, they can be a little bit distracting. Intrusive. Yeah, especially on the website. Mm -hmm. So if any of our listeners have ever noticed our clean, beautiful, non-distracting or, Mm. what'd you say, elusive? No, intrusive Mm. website, you know, we do it for you. Yeah, and of course we could put some ads on there, but if I visited somebody's website and things were flashing all over, I wouldn't want to be on that website. So I guess we keep our website like we'd like others' websites to be, isn't it? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Treat others how you would like to be treated, DJ. Quite right. Lovely. Well, everybody, thanks for listening to this advertising episode. We'll see you again next week. Until the next time. Bye bye bye. Bye. Hello and welcome back. This is the language focus, the part of the podcast where we take a closer look at some of the vocabulary from this week's chat. What you're going to hear is part of a longer conversation, over 10 minutes, that is available to our members. Let's do this. Hello, dear members. Bum, ba, da, bum. Welcome to episode 264, your bonus vocabulary episode for advertising. We're here to take a a deeper look into the vocabulary, teach you the pronunciation, and choose some of our favorites, or the most common in our opinion, and tell you a little bit more about how to use them more naturally. Let's begin with the American English pronunciation. Ahem. To be around for ages. Back in the old days. Take something to a whole new level. Pull up something. Bury something. I get it. Something blows up. Something covers someone. Sign me up. Push one's buttons. Take off. Stuff one's face. Or I should say stuff one's face. Or 
fill one's face. That seed was planted. Very nice. Take it away. I can only try to be that good. Here we go. To be around for ages. Back in the old days. Take something to a whole new level. Pull up something. Bury something. I get it. Something blows up. Something covers something. Sign me up. Push one's buttons. Take off. Stuff fill one's face. Stuff one's face. Fill one's face. That seed was planted. Woof. All right, now looking at the list, if you just see something covers something, it could be kind of confusing because what is the something doing the covering and what is the something being covered? In this episode, I believe we said something along the lines of it covers them. It covers them. And I believe it's when we were talking about the pharmaceutical industry and we were talking about like the fine, the very, very small, tiny print on a commercial that says like, caution, this taking this medicine may kill you. You may die. You may have a stroke. But they need to include that fine print because it covers them. It protects them from harm, which in this case would be legal issues. So if something covers something, it's often something that provides some kind of protection. I will need to say that the word cover, if you look it up in a dictionary, it's going to have like well over 12 different definitions. But in the context of this episode, something covers something, we use it to say that something provides protection, cover for another thing. Um, you might hear something like, cover me, I'm going in, you know, and it's kind of like provide me protection, protect me, I'm going in. Um, yeah, so that's going to be this. We're not going to go into all the meanings of cover. Hey, maybe we should have an episode called cover. Mm. But for mm. this, something covers com something, it provides protection for. I think you've covered that really well. <laughs> so. Yes, thank you. Nicely covered. Moving on. Um, I think this is, I think it's a fairly simple phrase. I went very high then. A fairly simple phrase, but I like it. And I think it may be one of the phrases that native speakers really take for granted, but it's not something that non-native speakers use that much. I think I'm right in saying that. And it's just for ages. Oh, my God. I've been waiting for ages. And it's a really nice... What's the word? E, uh, informal. <laughs> Sorry. It's a really nice informal way to say a long time. And in the episode, we said that something had been around for ages. Which means to hear the full conversation, head over to EnglishAcrossThePond.com. Bye.